Hello, how are you doing? My name is Stephen Edwards and welcome to this week's video blog. This is the third video of our 2018 financial series uh, and we're going to be talking about agings. Um, the reports that I sent to you, which I appreciate the, uh, the emails that I received on those. Uh, it seems like everybody is taking a look at those and trying to digest them. Um, if you haven't looked at them or if you already looked at them and you have any questions, please reach out to me and let's talk about it. But today we're specifically going to be talking about the agings. Um, so the aging that I sent to you, if you look on the last page, that is going to be really the page that uh, me being the, the owner of, uh, of EEP, that is where I concentrate. Where are the percentages? Um, you know, I, our goal is to be over 90% on the zero to 30 days. Uh, and, and what that means is uh, from the time that we bill it to 30 days, uh, 30 days is regulation what they have uh, to send you a payment, a denial, or request for additional information. So uh, that is a, a sweet spot. Uh, I'd like that to be at 90%. Um, but as you know, we started to uh, reconcile ATA a little bit differently and uh, really keep the ATA monies on the books until after the authorization. And then we take that money and, and put it out to, the, uh, to all the dates of service. So our zero to 30 days has gone down a little bit. Uh, because of that, I think it's a better situation for you. It gives you a better picture of your ATA uh, recipients and what you're making uh, per session for them. Uh, but it had a negative effect on our aging. So, uh, you know, you, you do things for, uh, you, you change things for certain reasons and unintended consequences. It comes to makes our zero to 30 a little bit lower. Now, having said that, we are at 88.42. Uh, so our... Uh, zero to 30 as a EEP community, 88.42% of the time you receive your money within 30 days. And uh, if a payer is paying you on the 28th day, the zero to 30, those EOBs have not been put in yet. So it actually is probably a little bit higher than that. This When I ran these, those EOBs were not put in yet. So uh, what you wanna see as you look at that last page of percentages, the dollar amount really doesn't mean as much as, because the dollar amounts can be reflective of how big you are. Uh, so if you are around that 90%, let's say 86 to, to 93%, zero to 30, I think you're doing pretty good. But then consistently, you want those percentages to go down. So from 31 to 60, you want that to take a steep down. Uh, the, the 61 to 90, again, you want that to decrease. So you want a progression of smaller and smaller percentage of total as you go farther out. So let, let's talk real quick uh, because our over 21 outstanding, over 120 days outstanding, is higher than what I want. So if uh, I was to ask you for your help, what uh, I would ask so we can get that number lower is when you get an insurance audit. Uh, United Healthcare uh, for January and February, you know, they always ask for notes uh, on every patient. So if we, we send out notes for our clients, uh, if you send it to us, and then we have some clients that like send it to themselves, send it to the insurance themselves, um, know that if you send it to us, we're going to get it out within 48 hours because United Healthcare, until they receive those notes, they are not going to process any of the dates of service that they have in queue to uh, consider and you have to prove medical necessity, which is why they're asking for notes. Uh, so, you know, the, the process and the administration after a data service is billed is paramount to keep those uh, those 61 to 90, the, the 91 to 120, and the above 120 down low, we have got to make sure that the administration after the data service is billed goes uh, systematically. And it's and when they ask notes, we get them the notes. More impact uh, that we can have on that. Well care, as you know, uh, for PT and OT, the, the EVA core to well care, their uh, authorization numbers don't match. So they're denying a lot of dates of service for no authorization, and we have to appeal. Now we're not telling you we're appealing, but when we get an EOB that shows denied 
for no authorization. We go into your EMR or ask you for the authorization. We do an appeal and we send it in. Insurances want appeals. They don't want you calling them uh, because the person that you talk to, if you ever talk to somebody from insurance, they don't, they're not always as helpful. And they'll say, yeah, I'm gonna send this back through to get reprocessed. You don't take their word for it. If you send in an appeal, that is a process within the insurance guidelines that you're supposed to follow. So we send in appeals on everything because if you don't send in an appeal or uh, a request to get it reprocessed within a certain time, you lose that ability to get it done. So that is also why our uh, zero to 30 is a little bit lower is because we have a lot of appeals out there uh, because of the processes of our MMAs. So take a look at your uh, take a look at your aging totals of the report that I sent to you. I think they're in really good shape. You're going to notice that there's a note on everything that's over 40 days old. If it's over 40 days old, it should have a note. Uh, if you if it doesn't, send Jesse an email. Why is this not paid? Uh, be nice, but uh, why is this not paid? It's 40 days, and this is not. Uh, you know, there's no note on why it's not paid. And if, if we appeal, they'll be right on there, appealed and the date, and it'll actually say who did the appeal and what time they did the appeal, because we're always working those agings. So hopefully that gives you some insight on our agings. Uh, I appreciate your time. Um, I am going snowboarding. You're gonna be getting this on Friday. Uh, I will be out in Big Sky, Montana snowboarding when you get this because uh, we are we're taping this on Wednesday. I hope everybody has a great week. I will be back next Wednesday and snowboard on.